Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Royt Varma. He's uh, joining us to talk about surgical management of primary angle closure disease. Welcome to the program, Dr. Varma. How are you? Glad to be here, Neil. Well, before I ask you what primary angle closure disease is, give us a bit of background uh, for our listeners. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, and where you practice. So I'm a uh, physician a scientist, uh, which means that I see patients as well as do research. Um, my primary area of research is in glaucoma, but I also study large populations and look at uh, my diseases amongst large populations. And I have been um, uh, given grants from the National Institutes of Health for the past uh, 25 years. Um, and most of those grants have, have been uh, looking at various blinding eye diseases in multi ethnic populations, including, um, I guess, um, um, Asians and, and African Americans and others. Um, the condition that, uh, um, and so, um, that's sort of my area of, I guess, research. Now, I see patients and so on at uh, CHA um, HPMC uh, here in L.A., uh, and I'm the director of the um, um, my institute, in fact, over here at CHA HPMC. So um, that's what I do, um, and I'm excited to be here. So. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining us this evening. Now, primary angle closure disease, is that also known as glaucoma? Are they two separate things? What is uh, primary angle closure disease? Right. So um, glaucoma is a condition where the pressure in the eye is raised and that um, elevated eye pressure leads to damage of the optic nerve, which ultimately leads to loss of one's peripheral or side vision. And finally, in the advanced stages, you lose all vision and you go blind. In fact, uh, glaucoma as a whole is the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. Uh, There are two main types of Glaucoma. One of them is called as open angle, which is the most common form. The other one is angle closure, which is less common, but is much more visually disabling. Um, so there are about, um, it's estimated that worldwide, there are about 11.7 million people that have primary angle closure glaucoma and many of them live in East Asia or or are of East Asian sort of um, descent. Mm -hmm. Um, Primary angle closure disease is a spectrum of conditions uh, where you have sort of the pre uh, pre glaucoma form where um, the area of the eye where the fluid in the eye drains out from, that area sort of slowly starts to close down. And as it starts to close down, the eye pressure, um, I mean, if you will, increases. It's like a sink where when the drain sort of gets clogged up or blocked, uh, the sink starts to fill up with fluid and the pressure sort of increases in the sink. So uh, the same thing occurs in the eyeball that when the drainage area of the eyeball starts to shut down, the pressure in the eye goes up, and um, that is called as primary angle closure disease. Now, when you go from disease to glaucoma, the key difference out there is that people that have glaucoma, primary angle closure glaucoma, have already lost vision and have already had damage to their optic nerve. So the disease is a kind of the pre, pre, pre-glaucoma and glaucoma, 
but it's the entire spectrum, if you will, whereas primary angle closure glaucoma is where people have already lost vision. Uh, and um, and so um, uh, those need to be treated much more um, seriously, if you will. Let's talk about the treatment, the, the surgical management of this condition. Sure. So, um, so um, as I said, what what happens in primary angle closure disease is that the drainage area of the of the eye starts to slowly get sealed or shut down, and therefore um, uh, fluid starts to collect in the eye and the pr- pressure increases. Um, there are two sort of main approaches to trying to open up the drainage area of the eye. One of them is that the drainage area uh, sort of sl- starts to seal up because these patients develop um, what is called as a pacification of the lens or 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 cataracts, uh, where the lens becomes thick and it starts to seal the drainage part of the eye. And so one particular approach is, well, let's just take that, that cataract out. And that'll sort of um, open up the area which was getting sealed, the drainage area which was getting sealed. The second approach is to not only take that cataract out, but in addition to go in and surgically, manually, if you will, unseal that drainage area. And so what we wanted to, what what this particular group wanted to do was to see whether uh, just taking out the, the cataract versus taking out that particular the cataract and manually unsealing the drainage area, which one of the two would work better? And what they found that just taking out the the cataract uh, was good enough and was as good as taking it out and trying to manually unseal the drain the uh, you know that drainage area. And so it's why what what we wrote uh, was that in this particular instance, doing less is actually more because you're getting the same benefit by just taking out the, the lens and, and cataract rather than go, going in and doing not just removal of the lens, but also manually trying to open up the drain. When one doesn't really need to go in and manually open up the drain because just taking out that, 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 that lens does just as much as if you were to uh, take out the, that lens and manually open up the drain. Dr. Varma, where can we get some more information online about uh, your practice there in Los Angeles, about this procedure, and about the uh, presentation in the American Medical Association, uh, the Journal of American Medical Association? Right. So you you can actually go on to our website, which is um, www.fcey. E S dot O R G. So it's S C I S dot O R G, and you will find links to uh, this condition. You will find links to this particular um, article, uh, and you will find more about you know how one can treat this and various um, I guess well other conditions as well. Um, in addition. You can also go to the website of the Journal of the American Medical Association, in fact, and they will also have um, uh, papers. Um, If you look up under my my name, they will have these uh, papers, if you will, um, on their website as well. 
you know, it, it's just important that we we start to sort of, you know, that think about how doing less actually allows us to individualize the care for each patient. Uh, this approach is widely adopted in the entire medical care community, uh, and it's a concerted effort to provide um, optimal clinical outcomes while reducing the cost and minimizing over-utilization of care. Um, I think in addition, um, future studies should uh, try to identify biometric measures uh, using specific tools like OCT, which can prognosticate an individual response of various patients to uh, specific treatments so that cost-effective care can be the, can be the, um, um, individualized to each patient. This is a precision health initiative. Thank you so much, Dr. Varma, for uh, joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I appreciate the invitation, Beth. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio of this program is available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.